Spring-driven. Examples of spring-driven clocks. Clockmakers developed their art in various ways. Building smaller clocks was a technical challenge, as was improving accuracy and reliability. Clocks could be impressive showpieces to demonstrate skilled craftsmanship, or less expensive, mass-produced items for domestic use. The escapement in particular was an important factor affecting the clock's accuracy, so many different mechanisms were tried. Spring-driven clocks appeared during the 15th century, although they are often erroneously credited to Nuremberg watchmaker Peter Henlein, or Henel, or Helle, around 1511. The earliest existing spring-driven clock is the chamber clock given to Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, around 1430, now in the Germanisches National Museum. Spring Power presented clockmakers with a new problem, how to keep the clock movement running at a constant rate as the spring ran down. This resulted in the invention of the stack freed in the fusee in the 15th century, and many other innovations, down to the invention of the modern going barrel in 1760. Early clock dials did not indicate minutes and seconds. A clock with a dial indicating minutes was illustrated in a 1475 manuscript by Paulus Almanus, 42, and some 15th century clocks in Germany indicated minutes and seconds. An early record of a second's hand on a clock dates back to about 1560 on a clock now in the Frommersdorf collection. 417 to 418. During the 15th and 16th centuries, clockmaking flourished, particularly in the metalworking towns of Nuremberg and Augsburg, and in Blois, France. Some of the more basic table clocks have only one timekeeping hand, with the dial between the hour markers being divided into four equal parts making the clocks readable to the nearest 15 minutes. Other clocks were exhibitions of craftsmanship and skill, incorporating astronomical indicators and musical movements. The cross-beat escapement was invented in 1584 by Joost Berge, who also developed the remontoir. Berge's clocks were a great improvement in accuracy as they were correct to within a minute a day, 46, 47. These clocks helped the 16th century astronomer Tycho Brahe to observe astronomical events with much greater precision than before. Citation needed. How? Lantern clock, German, circa, 1570. Pendulum. The first pendulum clock, designed by Christian Huygens in 1656. The next development in accuracy occurred after 1656 with the invention of the pendulum clock. Galileo had the idea to use a swinging bob to regulate the motion of a time-telling device earlier in the 17th century. Christian Huygens, however, is usually credited as the inventor. He determined the mathematical formula that related pendulum length to time, about 99.4 cm or 39.1 inches for the one-second movement, and had the first pendulum-driven clock made. The first model clock was built in 1657 in The Hague, but it was in England that the idea was taken up. The Longcase clock, also known as the Grandfather clock, was created to house the pendulum and works by the English clockmaker William Clement in 1670 or 1671. It was also at this time that clock cases began to be made of wood and clock faces to use enamel as well as hand-painted ceramics. In 1670, William Clement created the Anchor Escapement, an improvement over Huygens Crown Escapement. Clement also introduced the pendulum suspension spring in 1671. The concentric minute hand was added to the clock by Daniel Quayer, a London clockmaker and others, and the second hand was first introduced. Hairspring. In 1675, Huygens and Robert Hooke invented the spiral balance spring, or the hairspring, designed to control the oscillating speed of the balance wheel. This crucial advance finally made accurate pocket watches possible. The great English clockmaker Thomas Tompion was one of the first to use this mechanism successfully in his pocket watches, and he adopted the minute hand which, after a variety of designs were trialed, eventually stabilized into the modern-day configuration. The rack and snail striking mechanism for striking clocks was introduced during the 17th century and had distinct advantages over the count wheel or locking plate mechanism. During the 20th century there was a common misconception that Edward Barlow invented rack and snail striking. In fact, his invention was connected with a repeating mechanism employing the rack and snail. 
The repeating clock, that chimes the number of hours, or even minutes, on demand was invented by either Quare or Barlow in 1676. George Graham invented the deadbeat escapement for clocks in 1720, 